there, welcome back to Amazing Psychology. I'm Priya Vergees and today we're going to take a look at Jean Piaget's Cognitive Development in Infancy. It's an important topic, it has come several times for the exam, so let's just dive right into it. Jean Piaget's Cognitive Development has been asked twice in the exams. One time it was asked as a six mark question and the other it was asked as a three mark question. It is still a very important concept so we will study it in detail just in case it is asked as a 10 mark question later. Um, I went through the question papers and I also went through the textbook material that we have and I found the section to be a little jumbled up so I felt that I would be better able to explain the concept to you with the help of slides which is what I have done in this particular video. What is cognitive development? Cognition is a broad and inclusive concept that refers to the mental activities involved in the acquisition, processing, organization and use of knowledge. So basically cognition is a process involving mental activities and those mental activities are found around the particular processes of acquiring information, processing the information, organizing the information and converting that information into knowledge which can be used at a future point of time. Now all these activities include certain specific phases which are detecting the information, interpreting what that information means, classifying the information into different sections, remembering what the information was, evaluating your ideas from the information you received, then you infer principles or you find out rules, you imagine possibilities, you think about new concepts, you develop strategies, you dream and fantasize about things. All of this falls under the broad umbrella of cognition and all of them are mental activities. Before we get started on the actual theory, I thought it was important to know who Jean Piaget is. This won't be asked for the exam, but it's still good to understand the context from which this particular theory was developed. So Piaget was born in Switzerland towards the late 1800s and he was such a prodigy that he's published his first scientific paper when he was just 11 years old. He also had a great background in psychology and worked with Alfred Binet and Theodore Simon on the standardization of their famous IQ test. Now around the time that Piaget was alive, people generally thought that children were just miniature versions of adults. He was the first one to identify that children think differently from the way adults think. In fact, he proposed that intelligence is something that grows and develops through stages. It's not something that is small and then suddenly becomes big. It goes through a series of stages. Around that time, people always thought that older children were much quicker and smarter than younger children. But he's the one who suggested that the difference that you see between children is not because one is more intelligent than the other. It's because that they are different in the way they think. There are qualitative and quantitative differences between the thinking of young children versus older children. So based on his observations, he finally concluded that children were not less intelligent than adults. They simply think differently. According to Piaget, early cognitive development involves processes based upon actions and these later progress to changes in mental operations. So people first develop their understanding or their early cognitive development through actions that are around them and that they do and this later progresses to mental operations or mental workings and understandings based on those actions. Now the first thing that we see is the sensory motor stage and this is the stage between the time of birth to two years and this is the stage that we will be studying in today's video. The other three stages are the pre-operational stage which is from ages two to seven, 
Then comes the concrete operational stage, which is from ages 7 to 11, and the formal operational stage, which is from ages 12 and above. We can see the different stages of Piaget's cognitive development in this picture. In the first one, you can see the sensory motor stage where the child is just barely learning how to hold a glass and is sucking on a pacifier. The second stage, which is the pre-operational stage and somewhere between the ages of two and seven, is when the child slowly expresses its likes and dislikes for certain drinks, or uh, gains more autonomous control over their bodily functions. The third stage is the concrete operational stage. This is a stage when a child is able to think about whether the glass that it's holding contains the same volume of water. So that's what you see represented in that picture. And the fourth stage is the formal operational stage where the child is able to think about abstract concepts like whether a glass is half empty or half full. Piaget's theory on cognitive development has four stages as we saw and out of that the first stage is the sensory motor stage. It's called the sensory motor stage because it involves the different senses of the child. During this phase of development, children utilize their skills and abilities that they were born with to learn more about their environment. So these are actually the skills that they actually utilize are their basic senses to look, suck, grasp and listen. Now these sensory motor stage can be divided into six sub stages and we'll be looking at each of them. The first one is reflexes. During this stage the child understands the environment purely through inborn reflexes such as sucking and looking. Now the second stage which, go, which is between one and four months is the primary circular reaction. During this stage there's a coordination of different senses and the formation of new schema. Now I'll give you an example to make you understand what that means. If a child accidentally sucks their thumb and then repeats the action because they found it pleasurable, then it is a coordination of that sensation of sucking the thumb and the creation of a new schema of repeating the action because the child found it pleasurable. Third stage is secondary circular reactions, which is from the fourth to the eighth month. During this substage, the child becomes more focused on the world and begins to intentionally repeat certain actions in order to trigger a response. An example of this is a child purposefully with intention picking up a toy so that it can put the toy in his or her mouth. Now that is an intentional action. The next one is coordination of reactions, which is between the eighth month and the twelfth month. In this substage, the child starts to show more clear intentional actions and they start combining several schema in order to achieve that particular effect. And they also explore their environment more and start imitating the behavior of people around it. Now an example of looking at intentional actions and combinations of schema is when a child begins to understand that certain objects have a specific quality. Like if a car is pulled backwards and released, the car will run forward. Or if a rattle is picked up and shaken, it will give out a specific sound. So the child starts associating certain different qualities to different objects. That happens between the month of 8 and 12. The fifth stage is tertiary circular reactions. And during this stage, which happens between the 12th month and the 18th month, the child starts experimenting through trial and error method, such as giving out funny sounds so that they will get the attention of the caregiver or tossing things down to see if somebody picks it up and gives it back. These are the different kind of experiments the child starts doing. And the final stage, which is the early representational thought, which happens between 18 months and 24 months, the child begins to develop symbols or to represent events or objects in the world. Now, during this phase, the child starts getting a broader understanding of the world through using their mental faculties or mental operations rather than purely through actions. So this is the stage where the child starts thinking. 
sees the action, understands what's happening, starts processing the information and starts producing new ways of behavior rather than just an instinctive reaction to a particular action or stimuli. So these are the different stages that a child goes through. And there's one more thing that we need to look at, which I'll show you right now. One of the greatest accomplishments of the sensory motor stage is object permanence. What is object permanence? It's a child's understanding that objects continue to exist even when they are not seen. So let's look at an example. If a child is playing peekaboo or hide and seek, for example, and let's say that an object is shown and then the mother hides it under the blanket. If the child was just born, the child will immediately think that the object actually vanished. And if the mother reproduces the object, will actually appear shocked or startled. But older infants understand the object permanence situation. They realize that the person or the object who is hidden now still exists, even though they can't be seen or heard. This understanding comes from a growth in their mental faculties and a growth in their cognitive abilities. So object permanence is a very important accomplishment during the infancy phase. So the different stages of sensory motor development are seen in this particular picture. You can see the primary circular reactions during the ages of one to four months where the child repeats pleasurable actions. Then you can see secondary circular reactions, which is between the period of four to eight months where the child constantly repeats the action to trigger a response. And then we see the tertiary circular reaction between the, eight, the month of 12 to 18, where the child starts experimenting with trial and error, such as throwing certain objects to see what happens. So I hope this particular section was completely clear to you. I deviated from the textbook a little bit, just so that you can get a clearer idea about the concepts of uh, Piaget's cognitive development. But uh, pretty much everything that was there in the textbook has been covered here as well. I just felt that this would be a lot more easier to understand than going through what was given in the textbook. If you have any questions at all, please leave it in the comment section. And also please do share this video, like, share and subscribe so you get more of my content when I put it out. Thank you so much. Have a great day.